I remember thinking, like, I'm really lucky to, to be here. How perfectly could this horrible situation have been aligned? I was visiting my husband, who was here, and I walked out of the room. I was on the third floor, and I collapsed. I've seen her through my, you know, peripheral vision, and I just kind of was watching her, and I thought that she was maybe looking for the room that she was kind of standing in front of when she fainted. I kind of yelled for help. That's when Nikki kind of came and assisted her with me. She hit her head on the door on her way down is what I think happened. Um, so I ran and got gloves and hit the emergency button and that's when um, Amy came over. I heard the emergency button and saw her on the floor and I could recognize immediately that she needed CPR. I started began doing chest compressions and um, I yelled to Nikki to grab an Ambu bag to do the breasts and together we um, did uh, two full minutes of CPR. Dr. Clark, who is a cardiologist, came. I remember seeing him and then uh, we have a team of people from ICU and CCU that show up to the codes. Um, and so those people were here. Um, and then there was some hospitalists on the unit. It was pretty obvious within a minute or two of arrival that she was critically ill and pretty obvious that she had most likely suffered a uh, pulmonary embolism, a blood clot from the legs to the lungs. We were able to then get a immobilization collar on until we could prove she didn't have a neck injury, get her on a stretcher and get her down to the uh, emergency room for further treatment. They rushed me down to the emergency room and then performed CPR in the emergency room, continued to do that. My heart stopped and stopped again. What they discovered quickly, which was the good news, was that it was a blood clot. Blood clots form either in the blood vessels in your legs or sometimes in your pelvis. That clot then dislodges and travels up through the main vein called the inferior vena cava that drains all of the blood from below the lungs to the heart, it passes through the heart and then gets stuck in the lung arteries. It can't go beyond them. It's like a uh, strainer straining your pulp out of your orange juice. And if there's too much pulp, it totally blocks the strainer and no more fluid goes through. The two things that saved her life or one that she was at a hospital, two that she was at this hospital where we have a program in place to rapidly intervene either surgically or in the cath lab to dissolve the clot. The circumstances really aligned for her. The cath lab team was already here that day. They were doing a procedure on another patient electively at, on Saturday morning so I was able to call over and say, don't go anywhere until we finished her emergency room evaluation and took her over and did this life-saving reperfusion therapy uh, with clot-busting medications. If this had happened to her at home or anywhere where she was by herself, I don't think she'd be alive today. When Dr. Larkin came in, because I was sitting up on Tuesday in a chair, and they said, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're sitting up. I was just really grateful that she was here when it happened. Had she been anywhere else, I don't know if she would have had this outcome. We were just there at the right time, and she was there at the right time. This was a team effort at multiple, multiple stages. It was good to know that she, she was okay. Every single doctor, every single nurse, I mean just such care and compassion. I've seen Dr. Clark a few times now and the nurses and the fact that they even came upstairs to say like, hey, we, we heard you're doing better. I can't believe you look the way you do now. Like I, I'm so happy to see you're up and around. I'm like, yeah, I feel great. So 
that's I, I, w I never would have expected that but it's really cool that they cared enough to say like oh, you know I really want to go check on that patient I'm gonna go out of my way to a different floor during my break probably and take a few minutes just to check up on something like that's really caring prognosis um, from here I'll be on blood thinners for the rest of my life and they've inserted a filter for now that'll catch any clots but um, from I mean my understanding is after this like I'll have to be careful and I'll need to be monitored but I can live a long full life we have a lot of choices of hospitals around here and like I would never go anywhere else I mean like everyone has been fantastic from the nurses to the doctors to the housekeeping to, like everyone has been helpful just they want to be here and you can just tell and you can feel that from them like that's really cool